a little while ago, I brought a video to you where I introduced the FlexFire 6 Premium from Wicked Technologies. And in that video, I said I would come back when I had more time on the stove so I could bring you a more comprehensive review. Well, since I released that video, Wicked Technologies reached out to me and said they had a few more components for those stoves they wanted to send me that to be included in the review. They also sent me a brand new stove that they are now are selling, and I thought I'd bring that to you today in a preview. This is the Lightfire from Wicked Technologies. If you're interested in hearing more about the Lightfire, keep watching. So once again, this is the Lightfire from Wicked Technologies, and it was sent to me for testing and review. So what I thought I would do is just go over some of the specifications for the stove and uh, give you some close-ups, and then we'll get to making a fire in it. So the stove, as it stands right, at, right now, is uh, 9.8 ounces in weight or 280 grams. It stands four and three quarter inches high to the top and which is 12 centimeters. Its width across the burn chamber is three and one half inches or nine centimeters and its burn chamber depth down to the to the fire pan or the fire grate is three and one quarter inches or 8.3 centimeters and of course I'll put all this information in the video description below. Once again this is just a preview so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to it. As you can see, I have been using it a bit, and so it is already starting to discolor. It has that beautiful discoloration that's common to titanium stoves, and that's for a very good reason. This is using the same metal that's used in the FlexFire 4 and the FlexFire 6, which is a proprietary titanium stainless steel alloy. It has the strength of stainless steel and titanium, but with some weight reduction to go along with that. Okay, what's really cool about this stove that I've discovered, and it's intentional on the designer's part, is that the di dimensions across the top are identical to the Flex Fire 4. And that is so you can interchange components with this. See, this st stove has been stripped down to its bare minimum. There you can see the fire grate, but there is no ash pan, and that's just simply to reduce weight, make this the smaller, lighter of the stoves that you can pack. But if you wanted to, you can use the accessory plates that come with the Flex Fire 4 in this stove, such as the, the brand new uh, wood pellet plate, which works very well. There's a solid ash pan if you wanted to use that in the upper position with those slots so that you can use uh, Esba tablets or gel of some type. And uh, there is also a new plate to, be, to use this with the stove or the FlexFire 4 that allows a trangia to drop in and be held. Okay, that again is just a, a preview of the stove, but what I think you'd probably like to see is this in action. So let's take it down to the fire pit and do exactly that. So I have the light fire set up in a fire pit for wind protection more than anything else. So I think what I'll do for this demonstration is use a little bit of birch bark, kind of split and put in the bottom or put in the uh, into the stove. Maybe I'll just put a few pieces more in there. And uh, what I have are some small splits of maple, oak, birch. I think it's mostly birch and maple that I've got here. Some old birch, a little spalt it, but still works. Let's see if I can't get this lit. Nothing special today. Just a Bic lighter. And we'll put in a few of these sticks. Make sure I get that going properly. That's better. Now, like other, what I refer to as German design stoves, it has a feed port that sits a little higher than some of the American design stoves. And really, it's, uh, as I mentioned in other videos, both work very well. It's just a matter of which you prefer. I kind of like this, the way to be able to feed this from that higher position. And uh, just being a little careful, I don't put my fire out as I put the wood in. Didn't put a lot of birch bark in there, but I think it should be enough. I could, I would normally and should have probably start with some even smaller splits of wood just to make sure that it caught without issue. But it does seem to be catching okay. The wood is quite dry. So I can get a fair amount of wood in through that port. There is so much similarity between this and the FlexFire 4. The only real difference, other than the fact that it doesn't have the ash pan like the FlexFire 4, is the height. And uh, the, the height is a real advantage on the FlexFire 4. It creates a real good chimney effect, but this being shorter is not hampered by that. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's gonna work out very well. 
it's smaller, lighter as a result, but still very effective. So as that catches on, I'm going to feed a few larger pieces of wood in. And then I have two pots here with me today that I can demonstrate what a small pot and a large pot look like on that. Uh, quite often small stoves like this can be dampened down by larger pots and cause a lot of smoke. I think it might, but well, we'll see. It might, but you know, I don't think it's going to be a real issue because the design of the stove seems to have a lot of exhaust ports all around the top and even though the pot stands don't sit a high, you know, a great distance off of the stove, there should be enough room for that to work. So that looks like that's catching pretty good. Let's put, this is my Tom Shoe Titanium 750 mil. You know, as far as uh, dampening the stove down, you wouldn't even know that I put anything on. It's not doing anything at all to the airflow of the stove. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of flame coming up around the outsides of that. So that stove, that pot is a good size for use on this stove. It's, you know, you can go to a larger pot, which I'm about to do. It's always important to make sure you match the pot to the stove so that you don't use a pot too large for what your stove is. And of course you match the stove to your needs. What is it you're going to be doing with it? How much cooking are you going to be doing? So that works well. And the other pot that I'm going to be using is the Pathfinder bush pot covered in needles and leaves on the bottom. That'll definitely smoke. Let's put that on. So maybe a tiny bit of dampening down, a tiny bit of smoke, but certainly nothing significant. Making sure the wood stays inside. There we go. Yeah, well designed. I see lots of good airflow in the stove. Now, because it does not have an ash pan, you do have to be careful where you set this stove up. That fire grate is quite wide open, so a lot of hot coals could potentially drop through onto the earth below, which if you're using a fire pit like I'm using that is fire safe, then that's not an issue, but you just have to be careful what it is you have this on top of, so whatever underneath isn't going to be combustible. All right, so that's basically all I wanted to do is show you that in operation. Let's lift it off again. Nice flame pattern. It's working well, lots of airflow, as I mentioned. So far, so this is not the first use. I think you could tell that just from the, the tearing up at the sides and the like. So I've used it a few times and I'm quite liking this stove. So uh, again, I will bring this back for a full review at a later time. All right, let's wrap this video up. So once again, this is the light fire from Wicca Technologies. And again, this is just a preview, not a full review of this stove. But what I've seen of it so far, I like a lot. I have a bit more testing I want to do with it. I'll bring it back. I have some pellet testing I want to do, alcohol, some solid fuel, and some charcoal testing that I'll be doing with the stove. And when I've got that done, we'll come back and we'll do a full review on the light fire. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.